I will start first uh, with the drug consumption room in Europe, so logistics, challenges and uh, results. So I come from uh, the French organization uh, Gaia Paris, we, who are, which are in charge of a drug um, consumption room and low threshold OST program and also regional EPSI program. This is my disclosure. And the aim of this talk uh, is to describe the growing evidence to support the positive impact of supervised drug consumption rooms for individual and communities affected by injecting or overall uh, drug use. So to your point of view, the little uh, question, how many countries have established drug consumption rooms in Europe, including uh, uh, European countries and Switzerland? So vote now. So the results, uh, yes, so we will go on with my talk and you will <laughs> discover the results. Uh, so what are drug consumption rooms? Uh, generally, uh, these devices are uh, settled in towns where a drug scene has developed. A drug scene is where people buy and uh, take drugs. And the main, um, uh, it's to, uh, it's a facility in which people who use drugs can consume pre-obtained drugs in a safe and hygienic environment, free of judgment, under supervision of trained staff. And the main services are providing sterile injection and smoking equipment, intervention and emergency care in case of overdose, and referral to medical care, social services, addiction treatment services, and also sometimes psychiatry uh, consultations. And uh, the aims, um, there is two groups of uh, aims for DCR. First, uh, it's regarding people who inject or who take drugs. And uh, mainly DCR are targeting people who use drugs and live in very uh, precarious condition, marginalized people. It's to improve their uh, access to health and social services, to prevent drug-related overdose deaths, and to prevent blood-borne virus uh, contamination. And the second uh, aim is uh, regarding the um, environment, the vicinity, is to contribute to the safety of local community by reducing drug use in public places or semi-public spaces like uh, in the entrance of uh, buildings and uh, also to uh, decrease the discarded material you can find uh, in the streets. But the aims depends also on the countries and the context because some countries are more on the regarding the health of the drug user and more countries are on the vicinity. So the landscape in Europe, you can see all the country uh, which are, have uh, implemented the drug uh, consumption room. And just for the little story, Bern in Switzerland was the first DCR opened in 1986. And the last one uh, has opened in Lisbon, Portugal, uh, two or three weeks ago, a mobile uh, unit. And I know that Ireland has um, a project and also uh, Iceland has a change, has a work uh, regarding the law to be able to open a DCR. And uh, the characteristic and um, setup, so first DCR mostly aim at drug injectors. However, uh, with the crack uh, cocaine epidemic nearly 20 years ago now, the majority of DCR in Europe offers smoking boots. And uh, the, um, the access is uh, often restricted to people who are um, registered, reg uh, registered and uh, it can uh, operate in separate units or operate in a social unit with shelters or for homeless people. And um, we have three types of model, uh, integrative facilities uh, with all uh, other survival-oriented services or specialized uh, facilities 
uh, it's uh, really services specific to supervise consumption, like uh, advice, counseling on drug uh, safety, and mobile uh, facility to pre provide uh, um, um, a service uh, near the, the scene. So effectiveness of uh, DCR, um, the DCR have a positive impact on people who inject drugs, and um, especially uh, to um, engage and maintain uh, with high, highly mar marginalized target population, which lead to improve hygiene and promote safer injecting condition, reduce injection uh, risk behavior associated with uh, blood-borne virus, and reduce the impact of overdose deaths, especially and behavior associated with overdose. And um, at last, um, um, improve also increase uptake in, in um, addiction treatment, uh, access to drug dependent services. And there is a very important issue uh, regarding this is DCR need a wide and effective network around it, medical and social partners to support uh, the action and welcome the patient when they are referred, when they are ready to go to addiction services, because uh, DCR alone uh, can't work. It needs to be a part of a network. So for the overdose, uh, two examples in Vancouver, uh, regarding uh, the uh, city rate uh, of overdose, decrease of 9%, and in the overall city, and the decrease was, of course, higher in the direct vicinity of the DCR of 35%. And uh, at this time, um, there is no uh, drug-related deaths uh, occurred since the opening of this facility in Germany. And because the overdose management occurs quickly inside, more in monitoring, use of naloxone, oxygen, and so and also DCR have a positive impact on the community and uh, there is uh, no evidence to suggest that DCR increased drug use and frequency of injection near the facility, reduce especially the discarding and injecting equipment and injection behavior in public areas and do not increase drug-related crime around um, like trafficking and robbery. Um, but again, it depends uh, a lot on the context because the device, the DCR, must be adapted to the number of clients in the area. And uh, so the feasibility of setting up DCR, I will say first, uh, overcome legal barrier. Do the law of the country has to be amended uh, to allow professional to welcome drug users with their own drugs. And then the acceptability of the local uh, and environment, and especially the local political support. Do you have? Do there is a local political support? It's very important. And um, funding is also it's important. Uh, in 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 France, for example, the funding is on the uh, social welfare, but. Uh, it has been uh, quite a, a long discussion uh, to, to come to this point. So quickly, the case study in Paris. We struggled for seven years bef before opening in o uh, October uh, 2016. So we had the project. This project, it's important, was launched with ASUD. ASUD is a French drug user organization. We wrote the project together and we submitted to the government. And so after we had a long process of uh, lobbying advocacy uh, to the politics with the deputies and uh, to the parliament to uh, talk about the DCR. And uh, we were supposed to open in 2013, but the Council of State stopped the project due to the current law because uh, this law was not adapted to the protection of the professional in DCR. And so in January 2016, we had this uh, modernization of the public health law 
and this Article 43, who allow the experimentation for six years uh, in cities that applies for. And at this time, we have um, one in uh, Paris for 12, around 12 million inhabitants, and uh, we'll come back on that point. And there is another one in Strasbourg, uh, open in November 2016, uh, and we have other projects maybe in Marseille. So um, in Paris, uh, it's open seven days a week from 1.30 to uh, 8.30 p.m. We have a project to open the morning, but it's not yet done. And the establishment has uh, one injection room with 12 boots and one inhalation uh, room with four boots. And the team is, we have a one uh, GP, seven nurses, social workers, security agent and peer workers. And you can see on the pictures, we have the inhalation room, the injection room and the rest resting room where the people can stay, whatever they want. And we have also a welcoming reception area and a little courtyard where people can smoke and wait, uh, not uh, directly on the pavement in front of the DCR, they can come in in the courtyard. So the rules, because we don't have a lot of rules, but there are some rules, so it's to be um, uh, over uh, 18 years old, and it's free and anonymous, uh, I don't know if you know, in France also the OST program at, are free and anonymous. People can give a date of birth and uh, whatever they want, a surname, a name, nickname. Uh, the first visit, uh, we have an interview that assessed uh, the main difficulties and uh, if people have chronic disease, if they have already overdose, or if they have... Uh, um, uh, HIV, HCV uh, disease, and uh, we can talk about the operational rules, and uh, it's 20 minutes for each uh, injection, but um, in fact we can be a bit little longer for people who, are, who have uh, difficulties to inject. There is no restriction on uh, substances allowed, but the team can decide in specific case uh, not to allow this or that substance and depends also on the stage of the person. And no limited time in the resting area. And we have services inside, so there is medical consultation, social consultation, and referring to substitution treatment, and blood-borne virus screening, and also uh, um, an access, uh, is easier ac li linkage to care for uh, EPS here treatment. And we have also um, uh, work workshop for uh, integra integrating, integrating people who want to go back to uh, activity or a job. And um, since Oct from October 2016, February 2019, we had uh, 1,261 uh, person enrolled since the um, opening. And you see it's a uh, majority of male, people are uh, from uh, 21 to 69, and quite uh, regarding the presentation this morning, people that have 37, nearly 38 years old, quite uh, old. And you see 60% are homeless, and a lot of people has no incomes, and um, no health co coverage for 30%, so it's really a marginalized uh, public. And uh, we had um, um, 150,000 visits, a little more. It, it, it makes uh, 170 visits, 200 visits uh, every day during seven hours, so we are not uh, resting. <laughs> it's quite... Uh, Active and uh, 100, a little bit more, 100,000 uh, injection, and the rest is uh, mainly uh, crack smoking. And uh, in 2008, we had uh, more than 400 medical consultation for 178 users, and uh, also a lot of uh, social consultation regarding uh, homelessness. Uh, welfare, uh, justice, a lot of questions around uh, justice, 
and um, regarding overdose, 145 users are being monitored after drug use, but no deaths, and uh, we use naloxone uh, seven times. And because, um, I think I don't have on the slide, this is uh, particularly in, uh, in this area, people are um, um, consuming um, morphine sulfate, you know, and uh, they, we don't have, we have a lot of, uh, very few uh, people who are uh, injecting heroin. So they know uh, what they are used to the scanner and they know what they can cope. They know the dosage, we know the dosage because it's a real uh, pill from a pharmac pharmacosic pharmaceutical. So we don't have a lot of really overdose and it occurs only with, uh, with heroin. And because in France we have more than 150,000 people under OST and it's very, very easy to get uh, OST treatment. And because you talked about that this morning, we have people for, I'm prescribing for 28 days and sometimes more than 28 days and there is a lot of take-home treatment. So it's anonymous, it's free. We have a black market also in uh, OST. So I think this is also the, the reason why we don't have so many, um, so many um, uh, overdose in, in our country. And so we are doing screening, HCV, HIV, and uh, also treatment, and dry blood spot. If people have uh, antibodies for HCV, we are doing this drug passport to look after uh, RNA. And uh, case, case to the uh, clients uh, who are attending medical and social consultation. So you can see it's increasing uh, uh, the consultation, medical, nurse, and social. And also we are doing a lot of physical accompaniment to external consultation, to hospital, to uh, consultation, to clinics, and also uh, to social appointment for shelter or for justice, uh, for example. So um, the challenge now um, are, uh, it's difficult for us to increase the impact of this year by increasing the visitors. We are really uh, full and there is no other DCR uh, in the region. And, um, as I told you, we have 12 uh, million inhabitants and we have a lot of crack cocaine users which are growing these days and there is no available services for them because to come in this DCR, you must be injector. You can be injector and smoker, but you can't be only smoker. So they are uh, on the pavement and they come, come in. So we have huge scenes of crack use in Paris uh, people can't come in this uh, DCR, so since one year now we are working to open other DCR and to um, have more projects targeting crack consumer, has night and day shelters, and also uh, regarding the, um, the mental health uh, issue. So we are um, willing and we are trying uh, to keep this strong collaboration with the com community, especially the city halls, the state, state services, the police, and all the social uh, network around the DCR. And we are trying since one year to reorganize the harm reduction strategy and the services in the region so that there is equal access for all uh, people who use a uh, drug, because if you go far, a little bit uh, further in the suburbs uh, of uh, the region, it's uh, less and less uh, services. So after people are, are surprised because people are coming in Paris, but they can't find a service just next to their home. So in conclusion, uh, the DCR have been implemented in various European countries, and especially in Switzerland, Spain, Germany, and the Netherlands. And, um, New um, DCR are opening every year, and as I said, we had Belgium last year, and they have another project for Brussels, and also in Portugal this year. And uh, the evidence showed that uh, DCR are beneficial to both uh, uh, drug users and the community. And um, I think 
in conclusion, also a good analysis of the context during the implementation process is important. As I said, this year alone, are not able to have a positive impact. There is the need of medical and social network around the DCR to achieve uh, this goal and a strong collaboration with the local uh, partners and to find fundings, acceptance for the wider community and the law are key elements that need to be considered when establishing DCR.